And we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. And today we're talking about Microsoft Flight Simulator. The prodigal son has returned. Flight Simulator is like a really important thing to PC gaming history and this new game seems to really understand that. The original Flight Simulator graced computing machines in 1982, believe it or not. Microsoft Flight Simulator 1.0 for IBM PCs. So fast forward to then Flight Simulator X, last generation, that lasted for a long time. These games, if, if you can call them games, last for a long time and have bustling communities and support. You know, Flight Simulator always becomes more of a platform than anything else, and I think they're an, an, an important part of home computer history and just PC gaming culture. And now, in 2020, we have this new Microsoft Flight Simulator, once again, for a new age. This thing is an absolute beast, man. It's just really exciting. You can't help but be interested when you see gameplay videos like ours and other ones out there, you know? Just keep in mind, this is very much still a simulator game first and foremost, but we've been playing a review copy for the last couple of days, and it's pretty cool. The gameplay you see here was recorded on various machines, and uh, no, we're not experts, okay? We don't know much about planes, but we're having fun. Right out of the gate, get ready for a big install, you know, via Microsoft or Steam, which is where we were playing it, which it's nice to have the option for Steam. You download the game, and you fire it up, and it serves as a launcher to download and install a truck ton more data. It's like a 90 gig surprise, so make sure you have something else to go do or take care of some errands while this game gets ready. But from there, you adjust your graphic settings and your data settings, because Flight Simulator streams in world data. So the game warns you and gives you options if you want to stay connected but maybe you have an internet band with cap or something like that, which probably really sucks. It's something to keep in mind. Now, once you get up in the air, and I'll explain how you do in a little bit, you immediately can experience the game's magic. It looks damn good. And you float through the sky, managing your aircraft. Sometimes there's some wind you're fighting against. Sometimes you're high in the clouds. Other times you're flying super low to get a glimpse of the landscape. This game, more than anything, is just like freedom. Fly around, do whatever you want. Cruise super low and fast next to the pyramids. Zip around the Empire State Building. Do a barrel roll. You know, mess around and just have some fun. Or you can take it super seriously and do a super challenging flight and really properly fly a plane. You know, flipping every single little switch, doing everything smoothly and perfectly and following the aviation laws. Maybe you like to really do it by the book, you know, take a big commercial airliner, which there should be more of in this game, I will say, uh, but like smoothly fly it across an ocean for a long time and nail the landing. You know, a lot of these experiences can be really, really challenging, especially to newcomers, but at the same time, it can also be incredibly relaxing once you're up in the air. You know, this, believe it or not, for, for all its technicalness, for me, seems like it could be a good chill-out game. You know, enjoy the ride. Enjoy the environment. Enjoy what they crafted here, what they made here with this insane world. This is the magic, because it's a massive, massive game. You can explore the entire world thanks to the game populating the map using like real world data and procedural AI magic to make it all three dimensional. It's amazing, thanks to the game's graphics. Like yeah, some of the buildings up close don't look perfect. And frankly, it does just auto populate and estimate some things. So you're not always going to see that same exact shopping mall with the proper signs, just maybe like a similar shaped building, but still it gets the job done and it's incredibly impressive. It really, really is a sight to behold. It's almost mind-blowing. If you're the explorer type, this game just gives you those Google Earth moments. You know, remember the early days of discovering Google Earth and being like, whoa, I can find my house. Let's look at Mayan ruins next. Now let's do Paris. Like this game gives you that exact same feeling again. And it's, it's just really exciting for the game and just the tech behind it, if you appreciate that type of stuff. Then, of course, you know, there are the options. Play with a mouse and keyboard, play with a flight stick and like a whole setup. We did a bit of both here and it feels great and mostly works pretty seamlessly. The game does a good job of helping you pick your control options, you know, how complicated do you want things to be? From cockpit and interface stuff to the actual piloting and the mechanical stuff, you're able to adjust different gameplay aspects to your liking. You know, hardcore realistic simulation, fun easy flying game, or somewhere in the middle. 
I think somewhere in the middle feels great because it, it's fun to manage some gear, but also being able to get off the ground in just a few seconds also really helps the fun factor. Plus, the game just has a, a new checklist system that pretty organically helps you along the way. It's, it's pretty clean. Think of all the options like some driving games like Forza. You know, you get to play around and find the right amount of assists you want to balance the fun and the challenge. Plus, the game has an active pause system, which is really slick and good for just catching your bearings and messing with stuff. Then there's just great camera controls, uh, multiple options. There's autopilot, and there's the ability to use a drone-type camera around your plane. It gets advanced, and I still haven't even totally scratched the surface. Just look at the controls list, and you might be overwhelmed. But figuring it all out is half the fun. Plus, the game has a pretty fleshed-out training mode with various scenarios to play and learn. You know, it, it walks you through stuff on the ground, then kind of in midair, and all the bells and whistles along the way. I, I have a small brain, and it, it was hard for me to grasp some of it at first, but still, it's, it's a good tutorial vibe, and it does work, and it's always there for you when you need it. And like I keep saying, tweaking everything is half the fun, like especially with the free flight map. It, you can scroll around the entire world and pick arrival and departure airports from anywhere, from like the big massive ones, JFK, Heathrow, stuff like that, to dangerous small ones deep in the Amazon. You pick your weather pattern, your time of day, or just have it based on real time and historical data. Like the weather and the traffic systems are apparently updated and, and based on real life. And this world of flight simulator is said to just change and be ongoing. And that's crazy. But all this stuff, you can set it how you want and then just go nuts out there. So there's free flying, like I mentioned, I've spent the most time with. Uh, then there's the flight training scenarios. There's activities, which kind of act like missions for you to do with certain parameters and challenges and, and ways to land and stuff. And then there are live events, which are updated, and you can actually get a little competitive with this stuff with leaderboards. Then on the menu, there's a hangar and a logbook and detailed pilot profile for you to keep track of your flights. You know, all of this is a good amount of content for this type of game, but the reality is, this is a simulator game, dude. You make your own fun here. I I'm not gonna count that as like a negative for this type of game, but it's something you need to know going in. Buyer beware. I've seen it already. It seems like some people got really wowed by the incredible graphics of this game and then jumped in expecting it to have all these comprehensive modes and things. But no, this game is still true to its roots. It's a flight simulator game. They give you a little more here, but at the end of the day, it is a pilot enthusiast simulation. It is a platform. It is almost going to be like a tool going forward. So again, it's something that you need to know going in, but there is that experience, you know, the beautiful graphics, the incredible sound design, which really sells a lot of it from just the sound of the planes uh, to the weather, like rain hitting it. And then all of that just hits just right. Flying into an airport at, at night, seeing those bright city lights, maybe through some rain, the tink of the rain on the windshield and on the panels, the chatter of the radio and the air traffic control, uh, the glow of your instruments, the, the real world Garmin branding on the stuff. It, it all just is so convincing and so immersive that it really is just worth experiencing. And like I've said, seems pretty well optimized. Haven't really had any issues except for one big crash, but the load times are the one thing. They're really, really long. I understand that they're kind of technically loading in the entire world, but still, when you are trying to pull off a challenge or you're crashing or you need to switch something, uh, the load it takes a really long time and it can be kind of tedious. Like they're really long, even for PCs with some badass SSDs. Uh, the only other thing that I think is a little weird, but some people might feel differently, is the purchasable stuff. Uh, there are different editions of the game you can buy and you get access to a bit more airports and a bit more vehicles. I'm very much of the type to be like, why can't that all just be included in the game? Why do we have to do that? But I'm just kind of an outsider looking in. I don't know how the hardcore fans feel, but what I am curious to see is how the flight simulator community will take to this. Will this grow? Will this become a platform like the previous games have? How will it be supported? How will it change over time? And how long will it last? Because what they built here is incredible from the graphics uh, to the physics engine, which is apparently like state of the art and, and all the aerodynamics and all the science behind this game. Like this kind of feels like a next generation game. I know that sounds crazy to say, but it, it really does feel like some video game magic, even though it may not be like a good old fashioned video game and more of a hardcore simulation, it is still mind blowing. That's where we're at though, you know, this is a before you buy. We give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinions. So now we want to hear yours down in the comments below. What are you thinking about Flight Simulator? You know, I tried to detail at least like the main 
features uh, without getting too deep in the mud. Uh, what are some of the things that maybe I didn't have time to mention that you found interesting or disappointing? Anything about Flight Simulator at all, let us know in the comments. But thank you for coming around. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed our gameplay. Because yes, we are very much not experts. But if you had a good time and learned something, clicking the like button does help us out. We really appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell, because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.